Maybe take wine off its pedestal just a little bit and enjoy it more on a daily fare. We fluff that pillow so deeply that people start to be intimidated by the product. I, I think that's a problem. Vineyard is also known for its pinots. Yep, yep. And, um, and I mean, 20 so years ago, there was hardly any pinot grown in the United States at a, at a really high level. Suddenly, pinot's hot. Why? What have we found out about Pinot Noir that has that made a silly us, movie has can do amazing things? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I mean, the sideways movie changed changed Pinot Noir in America. It, it uh, certainly it hurt never, Merlot sales. <laughs> oh, it killed Merlot sales. <laughs> Bummer. The critics just didn't know what to do with them. They don't. They didn't taste like Cabernet. They didn't taste like French Burgundy, mm -hmm. and they're riper. Uh, we finally started to figure how to do it, and it's expensive. It takes a lot of French oak. You're not going to do this with American oak. Uh -huh. It requires, you know, very expensive oak because it's so subtle. In parts of flavor that, yeah. that we can't and you need get here. Subtle oak. Uh -huh. uh, American oak is very aggressive. So we're, we're about to taste uh, some Pinot Noir wines from Talbot Vineyards, and uh, we've got two of them here with Dan Carlson. Uh, Dan, let's. Which they both come. They both come from our Sleepy Hollow vineyard. Surrounds our winery like a big horseshoe. We harvest all the grapes from this vineyard for our own production. No grapes are sold. No grapes are purchased. So, so again, this is a beautiful light red. This is not a yeah. dark. This is not this like is, Cabernet. This, this is an appropriate color for Pinot. And what should we be looking for? What flavor characteristics? Well, we're we... looking for fruit character, bright fruit character, cherries and berries and cranberries and, and red type of fruit in general. So we're gonna try it with the Belgioso Gorgonzola cheese, which has a, a little acidity to itself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but it, this is a mild blue cheese. This is See, not a super ripe blue it's cheese. It's kind of fun because this cheese is very aggressive, but it really works. It's aggressive mm -hmm. compared to the wine, but it's, yeah. it's a mild, it's not the less aggressive blue cheese. Yeah. So I like the way that this cheese and this wine work. If I, it makes the cheese taste better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It smooths out the cheese and it, and it makes the wine almost like a, a platform. Uh, Have you ever seen the library building in Seattle? Uh, the library building is a rectangle, but it's bigger at the top than the bottom. And I suddenly realized that what a great analogy for wine it was though. Yeah. Well, you got to have a hell of a foundation, and that's ripeness. Right. Fruit flavor, the, 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 the core of wine. The ripeness is the so, foundation. And so a little tannin, a little bit of this or that, that may be negative flavors, but yeah. in small enough quantities add that complexity. Yeah. Like, I don't like to eat basil by itself, but a little bit of basil on a pizza yeah. add, that, add that little bit of tension. I think winemaking is like turning pottery. I always say to my assistant winemakers, paint the pot any color you want, but the wall thickness has to be perfect all the way around the cup kind of thing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's fine winemaking yeah, and balance, yeah, that's, balance. That's, A lot of these people that are telling me they have headaches, they always say, you know, when I drink really good wine, I don't get the headache. Well, that's because these are hand-picked products mm -hmm. with a compressed bell-shaped curve. We're, we're, we're picking fruit at the level at which the primordial mind is supposed to be enjoying fruit. Yeah. It's interesting because overripe fruit has a lot of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. You would think we'd be just dying for yeah. this stuff. But what's interesting is a grapevine is just like a parent that the kid won't leave home. <laughs> you know, your 18 year old still in the back room. Yeah. Well, what do you do? You cut them off eventually. And um, the, the grape talks to the plant and says, I'm still here, I'm still here. And the vine says enough of this already. Yeah. So that it absorbs all the micronutrients out of the grape and stores it in its root system and says, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, you're go, you on your own now. Before we move to yeah, the next, yeah. you know, let me try it with a different food. How yeah, would beautiful. this be with, with these, this wonderful La Garcia uh, salami? I love the salami by itself. It's got amazing flavor. The wine tastes totally different with the meat mm -hmm, yeah. than it did with the cheese. I, I like it though. And, it, it and has, but, it's, but there's a little bit more of a contrasting yeah. thing going on. Here they tended to complement each other and round each other off. With yeah. the meat, we're tending to see a contrast. There's like yeah. you're, you're getting. So the meat almost tastes like the wine somehow. There's like some earthiness or something kind of gamey to the wine that sort of plays into this this thing. Yeah. yeah. 